Welcome to another episode of Teen Gen Talks, hosted by me, Melissa. And me, Desiree. Where the goal is to empower the youth of Glendale and connect youth to community resources, individuals, and organizations through interviews and discussions. And today we are joined by a special guest, Sydney Whitehead. Sydney is an American professional skateboarder, writer, and activist. At 15 years old, she was the first girl to have a two-page article and centerfold in a skateboarding magazine, where she spoke out about the impact of being one of the only females in the male-dominated sport. Sydney was inducted into the Skateboarding Hall of Fame in 2016 by legendary rocker Joan Jett. Sydney is the author of four books and is the founder of Girl Is Not a Four-Letter Word, a multi-platform movement that supports and encourages girls and women to skateboard. Don't forget to follow us on so our socials on Instagram and Facebook at LAC. Follow us on Spotify and Apple or wherever you get your podcasts from. Also make sure to give us a like and subscribe to our YouTube channel, Glendale Library Arts and Culture, where we post full videos every Friday at 4.30 p.m. Thank you, Cindy, for taking the time out of your day to talk with us. We have a lot to discuss. Thanks for having me. I'm excited to get going. So to start off the interview, um, can you tell us a bit about how your love for skateboarding came to be? Oh, wow. That's a good question. I started skateboarding here at the beach when I was really young, and I just fell in love with it. I fell in love with the freedom it gives you to get from place to place. And, you know, a bicycle does that, too, but it's different. Um, you can pick up your skateboard, walk into a restaurant with your friends or go get ice cream or whatever. You don't have to worry about it. And it's just such a fun thing. And at that time, everybody was learning it at the same pace. So we we're making up tricks. People were learning from other people. There was no right or wrong. And that's one thing I really loved about it. No one was correcting you. No one was saying, you do it this way. You do it that way. Because we were all figuring it out. And skateboarding is still like that. You're always still figuring it out. And um, can you tell us a little bit about um, the skateboarding world in the 70s? Yeah, it was it was great. It was a time of running free and wild. Parents um, kind of stayed at home, dropped you off at the skate park where you skated down to the beach and hung with your friends. You know, you didn't have cell phones. <laughs> you only had landlines and people didn't have answering machines. So you knew what time to be home. And if you weren't, you got in trouble. But you were pretty much left to your own devices. And kids worked out things with each other. If there were issues or problems, parents didn't even like half the time know who those kids were. So it was a lot less parental involvement, which was kind of great for growing up and learning skills to connect and, and be able to uh, relate to other people and figure out how you wanted to deal with problems. But it, it was a really great time in the 70s. Not so many girls, um, mainly boys. But since the sport was so new, Nobody really knew it was a girls' sport, sport, boys' sport. They just assumed it was a boys' sport, like surfing might be. But girls were fairly welcomed. And um, I, I didn't have any problems with it. I think if you just go into something assuming you belong and, like, you take up space, as you say nowadays, like, you create your space and you take up space, people don't challenge that as much. But if you go in with, like, oh, do I belong or can I belong, then it's going to be a little harder. So, yeah, it was very freeing. And do you think then, because it was so freeing, you were able to get like confidence and I guess it helped you gain confidence in a way? Yeah, I think that's a really great question. I definitely think that helps with confidence. Um, being around all boys, having to relate on that level um, is a little different than being around all my female friends. You know, they don't, they don't talk about the same things. They don't react the same way, a little bit different. Um, I think skateboarding and not having parents around and just figuring it out, it was a very big confidence booster in a way. But I think going into it, most people, um, I don't know if everybody was confident going into it, but I think they gained confidence from it. Just like you said, that's a great observation. And you were the first girl to have a two-page article on Central in a skateboarding magazine. How did that opportunity come to be? And how did it change, I guess, your life in any way? Um, you know, it was interesting. It came about very organically. There was a photographer named Bruce Hazelton who asked if he could do a photo shoot with me and shoot for a magazine. I had no idea it was going to be the centerfold. He was a 
very intelligent man, forward thinking, and said, wow, let's go to this plexiglass half pipe, you know, and shoot her on it. Maybe that'll be a cover or a centerfold or something interesting because it's a different sort of surface than concrete. And so every day, I would say after school, but I'll be honest, I was ditching school to get there to go to <laughs> photo shoots. And, you know, you think of photo shoots just one day, but it was numerous days in numerous places. And when he came to my mom and said, hey, you know, she got the centerfold and this two page article, I, you know, I wasn't allowed to speak to him on the phone because I was actually grounded at that time. I was grounded for ditching school to go shoot those photo shoots and I was grounded for a solid month. So I kept saying, no, let me have the phone. I was like, that's my photos. That's the magazine. And my mom was like, when you are done being grounded, you can get the magazine. I'm like, oh. so anyway, um, yeah, it was a wonderful opportunity. I feel so lucky to have had um, a man that was a forward thinker and, you know, a feminist in his own way uh, to see the value in shooting a female because a lot of women who are skating pools and half pipes did not get photographed as much because the photographers couldn't sell the images to the male dominated skate magazines. This man had a vision and he made it happen. And I'm just so very lucky to have known people like that throughout my life. So piggybacking off that, like what are some things that you noticed in the skateboarding community that you felt were not fair when it comes to girls skateboarding versus guys? I would say <laughs> equality was really tough to come by. Girls, a lot of times we would skate against the boys. Um, and then later when we had girls divisions, the money was nowhere near comparable, like maybe $100 for first place, 75 for second, 50 for third, and then nothing else. And the guys might get 5000 for first place. So that's something that's changed a lot. We, you know, didn't have the resources or the know-how, I think, to fight for that equality, except for speaking out when we did articles, which were far and few in between. But a few of us, Vicki Vickers and myself, did speak out about that sort of thing. But that was not enough to change it. Nowadays, we're seeing that change because the communities are so big and the internet and change.org and the news, everything, we're seeing that change. And there is um, equal pay for equal skate is what Vicki used to call it. Which I love that. And you also have been working as a fashion stylist, um, specializing in sports for the past 25 years. How did you, I guess, transition from skateboarding world to then sports stylist world and like or how did you merge both of them together? Oh, okay. Yeah, good question. I When I was on set doing any sort of skateboard stuff where I was on TV or whatever, I would ask people questions like, what do you do? And how did you get there? And that's a cool job. And there weren't fashion stylists because I was being interviewed for like talk shows and TV, you know, like news channels. So there weren't stylists. But I learned a lot about the industry and I knew like, this is something that I'd want to go into. I had relatives that I didn't know really well who were in the business. And I just decided living near Los Angeles, that would be a perfect segue for me when skateboarding kind of died down. So that's how I got into it. But I did jump around from different things, from production to location scouting and management to styling, and then learned like kind of need to follow what you love and try to see what career paths there are within that. Because you know, every day I hear about somebody who has such an interesting career and I'm like, I didn't even know that career existed. So I think if you can tap into your passion and you can kind of have someone help you, maybe at the library even, to find the ways, what is in that realm that you could be good at and go after. Because maybe you're not good at numbers, but maybe you're really good at retaining information and reading. And maybe there's something in that path that suits you. And I think that's so important. So throughout your years, what has kept you motivated to continue your journey? Uh, skateboarding, it's a no-brainer. It's It stays with you forever. It's probably like people feel about surfing. I surf a little bit as well, but I'm not as addicted. It's just something that stays with you. And, you know, the board's in the car, the board's in the house. You always want to feel that feeling and get on a skateboard and, and ride. Um I'm not able to do it every single day like I used to because of work and everything, but I do make sure I get on my board and I skate and I love it. I enjoy it. And I think there it's not even hard to stay motivated in that regard because it's just something that's so freeing and it's in you. I would tell people, once you start skateboarding, you will never stop. Like you might shelve it for a little while because you have other family obligations or maybe you had a baby or 
you know, whatever it is, but you will come back to it. You'll find that freedom. And I think during the pandemic, a lot of people found that new people and people who had stopped when they were teenagers, you know, and then go, oh, wait, this is awesome. So, yeah, it stays with you. And in 2013, you also created a brand called Girl is Not a Four-Letter Word. Can you tell us a bit more about the mission behind it and how it came to be? Yeah. Um, for, uh, Girl is Not a Four-Letter Word is a movement, and it's also um, a crew of girls that skate together. We have a team. The movement is all about encouraging other girls to skate and posting images on Instagram that aren't just our team, but other girls as well. Um, actually, any person who is a non-traditional skater. So that would include um, women, non-binary, queer, anybody who's not a cis male, pretty much. Um, and we just want to encourage people to get out there and skate and see that there's other people of all ages. I mean, we've got girls as young as three on our page. We've got women as old as 62. Um, my friend Judy Oyama, who's going to the slalom races for Worlds in Argentina, I think it's Argentina, um, or Buenos Aires. And so we have all age spans. And I think it's important to show that to people. And there's downhill and there's, you know, street and all different disciplines. So Girls Not a Four Letter Word is to help is to help with that visually on our website and our Instagram. And then also to raise money to help with different problems or causes within skateboarding. If people need money for qualifiers towards the Olympics, we had that situation a while ago. We were able to give some money to three different girls who didn't have big enough sponsorships to help offset costs to get to those qualifiers. So it's kind of a it's kind of a multi pronged situation, but um, we do collaborations with different companies with skateboards and helmets and all sorts of things to bring in money. And um, yeah, it's been going on since 2013, and and uh, it's just great. I love it. I love seeing these girls excel. So in the beginning stages, how did you? get your brand out there so people found out about it? Well, the website was the first thing. Um, got that up right away. And we were doing a collab skateboard with Dwindle. So it's a big male-dominated skateboard company. So we were able to get that collab board out in DPR. And, and the board said, girl is not a four-letter word on the bottom with my artwork. So that was a big push to let people know what we were doing. And back then in 2013, there wasn't a lot of this going on yet. So it, it really took notice. Now there's more and more crews, which I love seeing. You know, there's all different crews in different cities like Fro Skate and um, Proper Nar and all these different crews, Salt Rags. There's just a lot of them that encourage younger people and non-traditional skaters and people of color. Um, and I think that's really important. We were in the first generation of that and we're still here now. Um, so yeah, it's, it's good. It's good to see it growing. You need something in every city, every small town. People need to feel accepted and feel not nervous going to the skate park for the first time or skating. Uh, what was what was one of the difficultest parts um, that you encountered while creating uh, the brand? Um, I would say all the comments from mainly boys saying "girl" is a four letter word. Count it. Um, you know, comments like "Are you dumb?" "Girls four letter word," and then I have to explain. Um, I did a TEDx talk about that, about, you know, when you say, hey, you throw like a girl, that's a put down, or you skate pretty good for a girl, that's another put down. And, you know, a lot of four letter words are not nice words to use. So if you're using girl in that way, you're using it as a slur. And that's why we call it girl is not a four letter word. Um, hopefully those comments and those questions will get further and further away from us, because that means that women are being accepted. And, and it's something that people don't even understand the relationship of what that phrase means. Um, but the rest of it, I would say nothing's easy, but if you want it to happen, and this is my give back to skateboarding, this is what I do on the side of my fashion styling, which is my real business. So it makes me happy to see it. Yeah, there's always roadblocks, there's always small obstacles, but since 2013, we've just kept it going. What is something about the team that you have now for girl is not a four letter word that told you that this is the right team for you? Oh, you know what? A lot of the girls have been on the team since the early beginning. And I would say it, they're all great skaters, all of them. 
but it's not about being the best skater. It's about being well-rounded. It's about having other things to talk about too. Like we have one girl, Lola in New York. She's an illustrator. She's the youngest uh, graphic street artist in the world. Um, she's grown now. She's getting bigger and she does stuff with Apple, all kinds of interesting things, right? We have um, another girl who is a, is a writer. She does a lot of writing. So she's been working with some people we know in the writing world to do that. We just, I think it's more than skateboarding. It's being well-rounded. It's having something to bring to the table. Skateboarding is awesome, but what else do you do too? Um, what else interests you? And I think all the girls we have on our team have that. One girl's interest in fashion, which, you know, I love to talk about. So everybody has a different interest. And it's fun seeing some of the older ones go away to college now and tap into those interests and use girl as a four-letter word, girl is not a four-letter word, as um, part of their entry into college, talking about how this is a movement and a service-orientated group. And also we have a nonprofit arm. So they've been with us so long, they've used that as like, hey, I did this, this, and this. And I'm like, wow, that makes me really proud that this is something that helped your college essay. So I think it goes beyond skateboarding. It really does. And, um, you know, speaking about going picking back off of that, um, you guys sponsor a lot of incredible young skateboarders, like you said. How do you... Uh, get in contact with these like young skateboarders and like uh, I guess create that relationship? Good question. Um, a lot of times with social media now, people reach out to us. I kind of keep an eye on what's going on here and there. Sometimes one of the girls will say, oh, you know, do you know so-and-so? She's awesome. But most times I really just keep an eye on people for quite a while and see how they develop and see who they are and what kind of person they are, what kind of feedback I get. And go from there. We like to keep the team fairly small so we can do a lot of fun things with them. If it gets too, too big, then it's a little bit harder. Um, but the movement handles that part because we are here to support anyone and everyone. We're not here just for the team. But the team comes into action when we do like a demo or, and then we even then bring in outside friends too and say this person would be great, that person would be great. But the team is kind of a special element of girls, not a four letter word. They have their own bios on the website. They have their pictures up. We do photo shoots. We did one yesterday so they can update their photos. You know, there's special things that we do with them make connections within the male dominated skate industry. If they want to skate for a team, if we can help and we have those inroads, we try to help them get there. That's important too. I think, I think um, non-traditional skaters helping others is super important. You are also an author of three books. What made you want to venture into the author world? Oh, you know, I always loved reading when I was growing up. That was my favorite escape, my favorite thing. In fact, it was the only punishment that worked with me. If my mom's, you know, was going to punish me for something, you could ground me, but I could still read. So I was like, bummer, I can't go out. I can't skate. I can't be with my friends, but I've got this whole set of books here and I can read. So she started learning, which is bad and good, that if she took away reading at night, um, when I went to bed was when I usually like to read for an hour or so, that that was the only thing that really worked with me to get me to, to toe the line is telling me I wasn't able to read. And I don't suggest that for other people because you don't want your kids to not have a love of reading. But for me, it was the opposite. It made me crave it more. And I've always been a big reader. I've always frequented my public library. I would go there once or twice a week with my grandma to pick up new books. And um I just love to read. So I think what happened from there is in school, I loved creative writing because I figured out you could create these characters and you could have them go wherever you wanted, wherever your imagination took you, you could make those characters, those people. And that was really fun. So I loved creative writing. So um, while being a fashion stylist, I was always writing articles on, on fashion and things like that. And then from there, I was like, I really always wanted to write books. And so I started working towards that goal uh, with the first skateboard book. And that one was pretty much photography based. So less of my input there, but some, yes. And then the next two books were self-help books for teenage girls, empowerment books, what I see can help you to be an empowered teen and tween also. And um, 
Um, what is your, I guess, process like when creating these books? Is it different each book or um, is it kind of the same? Well, the, the first book, uh, I was always like, there's not women's skateboard books out there. It was very, you know, nothing. And when I was younger, I always wanted to look in a skateboard magazine and be able to pull a poster out and put it on my wall like girls did with that centerfold of me. And so when we created the book, my husband had been shooting photography of women's skateboarding for five to seven years at that point. And we went through all the images and we started to work with Elise Krieger, who was actually a designer I met through Instagram, who just reached out to me and was like, if you ever need help with anything? This is what I do. And I'm like, wow, that's so cool. Um, you know, like that takes a lot of guts to put yourself out like that. So we started talking, doing little projects. And when I decided to do this book, we brought her in and we worked remotely with her in Florida and us here. And that's how we did the first book. We just felt there needed to be a hardback book that you could sit on your, you know, coffee table in your living room with your parents or in your bedroom. And you'd be proud of because it's full of girl skaters. So that's how the first book came apart. Um, the other two books, actually, the publishing company came to me on both of those and said, we've seen what you've done. We've heard your TED, TEDx talk. We've heard your ESPNW talk. We think you'd be perfect to write a book that we're thinking about. And that was um, the book for teen girls, teen girls journal. So that was the first one. And then off of that, they were like, this one's doing so well to write one. We should do one for tweens, like skew it a little bit younger for tweens. So that's how those two books came about. They came to me and said, we we think this would be a great project for you. Are you interested? In your TEDx talk, you mentioned how you asked Kuma to sponsor you simply by walking into the door and pitching yourself. Um, so how at even such a young age were you able to just, you know, pitch yourself and I guess have that courage to, to do that, you know, for a big company like Puma? Um, did it also like have to do with the fact that like you mentioned that like the guys around you had that courage and weren't like, you know, they did whatever they wanted to do? Yeah, I think it was twofold um, walking in and asking for things that I wanted and still even doing that now. My grandmother was a big catalyst in that. She's a firm believer in, you know, like boys are no better than you. You can be just as good. And she encouraged me to do that. She said, you you want to ride for this company and you want Puma tennis shoes and you're going to have to write a letter. You have to call them up and ask if you can come in for an interview and I'll drive you there, but, but I'm not going in with you. You've got to do the work. So I was like, well, worst they could do is say no. And right now I don't have any anyway. So why not ask? Um, so you don't, if you don't ask, you don't get, that's kind of my philosophy. And I do think the boys around me, because Boys growing up, at least in the 70s, they asked, they just said, hey, I want this, or you should do this for me. And they don't hesitate. And a lot of times my girlfriends would be like, well, it'd be great. You know, those phrases we tend to fall back on, like, it would be nice, or I'd love it, or I wish. And it's like, no, how about, I'm really good. I'd like to ride for you. How about you sponsor me? And you know, sometimes they're going to be labeled pushy or whatever it is, but look at the guy right next to you. He's saying the same words. Why should it be any different? So I think I got it from those two sources for sure. My grandmother and the boys. So what is one piece of advice that you would give anyone wanting to pursue skateboarding or scared to pursue it? Oh, I would say get on a board, get a friend who knows how to skate, who can help you and teach you. Nothing wrong with holding somebody's hand when you're first starting and learning. Um, just take it slow. You, you're going to love it. I guarantee it. A uh, smooth surface is always good. Having somebody who knows skateboarding, being with you is always good, but it's not necessary if you can't. You can grab a girlfriend, you grab a skateboard, watch a YouTube video, go on Instagram, get the basics. The, the most important thing is to figure out if you're goofy foot or regular foot. So if you stand with your right foot forward or you stand with your left foot forward, because that's going to make it much easier for you. And most people, the easiest way I've found to do that is um, if you were going to get in starting blocks and like start running a race, you know, which foot do you like to put forward? That's usually your dominant foot for the front of the board. Or the other way you can do it is you can gently have people stand on a line. And I say gently go up and tap them on the back 
whatever foot they put forward first is usually the dominant foot. So that's how you can tell. And then just get rolling. Looking back um, at your life and seeing the things you have accomplished and the people you have con um, have inspired and continue to inspire, what does all of that signify to you? Oh, wow. Um, I think if at the end of the day, not the awards, not the centerful, not any of that, that's not what I find most important. If I leave here inspiring other girls to do what they love, hopefully that's skateboarding, maybe it's something else. But if I leave here inspiring people to do what they love and having the confidence to do it, and that's how they remember me. I think that's most important. It's it's bigger than any um, awards. I always tell people, you know, do you remember who won a gold medal in just name some sport at the Olympics last time around? Now, sometimes you will remember, right? Because it's a big star. But there's a lot of people who win gold medals and you don't remember them. So after those accolades fade what do you want to be remembered for? Hope I want to be remembered for change, for bringing change to women's skateboarding and non-traditional skateboarding. That's my hope. So before we end, we have some rapid fire questions. The first question is, what is your favorite color? Oh, I'm going to say orange because it's a power color. I love pink and red. Orange is in the middle and orange is still a power color, but it's, it's not as a, Strong as red. When are you the happiest? On my skateboard or with the girls at the skate park, watching them do what they love. Yeah. Knowing what you know now, what advice would you give your 18-year-old self? Keep doing what you're doing. It'll all work out. You'll figure it out. You'll find your path. It'll be great. Things are awesome. Travel. Keep doing it all. If you could have three people dead or alive for dinner guests, who would they be? Oh, wow. Wow. That's a good one. Jeez. Who would I have? I would, say, I would say Judy Bloom would be one of those people because I loved her books growing up and she was so awesome. I would also say Essie Hinton because Essie Hinton went by Essie Hinton so they wouldn't know if she was male or female when she wrote The Outsiders and those books. And they were very like edgy, like strong characters, like Pony Boy was a strong character. I wanted to be called Pony Boy for a long time. Um, and uh, so Essie Hinton, Judy Bloom, and then I would say probably, um, you know, a, a, like Billie Jean King, because of all the change she's created in the world um, of women's sports and how she does it with such grace and style and confidence. I think that's somebody I have not met yet. I would have her over for dinner and I, I'd have to have one more in there. I'd have to have Joan Jett in there for dinner because she's a friend and she's a powerhouse and she's a badass. So she'd round out my mix and I think they'd all get along great. What is a book that you have recently read or currently reading that you would recommend? Um, I would recommend Rise by Lindsay Vaughn, The Skier. I think that's a really important book just in general, even if you're not an athlete, because it talks about the ups and downs, the way people perceived her as a dominant skier but all the things that went on behind the scenes that you don't see. And I think that's important for people to learn, even in, you know, whether you work in an office, whether you're an athlete, whatever you are, people are going through things. You don't know what they're going through. Don't presume to judge. And uh, it, it's an amazing book. I think everybody should give it a read. Well, thank you so much, Sydney. We learned a lot about you. Thank you for taking the time out of your day to sit down with us and talk. Can you let everyone at home know about any upcoming projects and where they can connect with you? Yes, we have a new skateboard coming out that'll benefit our nonprofit. Um, that'll be coming probably, well, before Christmas, so probably October, November. And I'll be sending out an announcement about that. It'll be a new girl is not a four letter word deck, something we've never done before. We also have a new helmet coming out, which is really fun. And you can always follow us at girlisnotafourletterword.com and girlisnotafourletterword on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. We're the same everywhere, but we'd love for you to give us a follow and, and uh, ask us any questions you have about skateboarding. We're here to help. Awesome. Well, once again, thank you so much. Thank you. We really appreciated you for doing this and we enjoyed talking with you. So thank you so much. Well, thank you so much for having thank me. You. I love what you girls are doing. It's awesome. <laughs> and I can't wait to see it.